ಸರ್ವಂಗಿಪೀಠ ಯಜಮಾನ್ ನಿತ್ಯ ಸತ್ಸಂಗಿ ಶ್ರೀಮಹನ್ಸ್ ಮಹನ್ಸ್ ಕೊಟಾರೀಸ್ ತಾನಿದಾರ್ಸ್ ಡಿವೋಟೀಸ್ ಡಿಸೈಪಲ್ಸ್ ವಿಸಿಟರ್ಸ್ ವ್ಯೂವರ್ಸ್ ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬ್ ಸಬ್ಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬರ್ಸ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಸೆಟಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಓವರ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಥ್ರೂ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಟಿ ವಿ ಫೇಸ್ಬುಕ್ ಲೈವ್ ಯೂಟ್ಯೂಬ್ ಲೈವ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟು ವೇ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಕಾನ್ಫರೆನ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಎಂಟ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಸತ್ಸಂಗ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಟೆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಐ ವೆರಿ ಸಿನ್ಸಿಯರ್ಲಿ ರೆಕಮೆಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಾಂಗ್ಲಿ ರೆಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಸದಾಶಿವಹಂ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಕಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ಶಕ್ತಿ ನೀಪಾದ ಎವ್ರಿ ಡೇ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಸತ್ಸಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಬೆಸ್ಟ್ ಶಕ್ತಿ ನೀಪಾದ Satsang is the best Shakti Nibata. The best Shakti Nibata happening for you is the morning Satsang. So please come for every day Shakti Nibata during the morning Satsang. Again here we are with you today. to demonstrate next power entering into depth not yet fully but started initiation understand depth means working on cognition means your cognition should be able to move the world your oneness cognition should be so powerful physically you are able to move anything so yesterday again the new species got initiated into the depth dimension so the manifestation is going on very successfully without even touching they are able to move and crack coconuts they are able to move and crack coconuts today they will be performing cracking and sealing it back again the same way it was original say actually these powers have direct utility with these powers they can perform open heart surgery non invasive without touching a person they can finish open heart surgeries they can of course whatever i am claiming i will prove anything i claimed i always proved proved much more than what i claimed and it is possible to do non invasive surgeries and remove tumors and non invasive heart surgeries all this is possible removing the fat settlement on the tubes blood tubes blood circulation arteries all that is possible it's actually training for all that my sanyasis are going through the training the new species are going through the training we usually don't test on animals because we are cruelty free organization hinduism itself is cruelty free religion 
actually this cracking the coconut and healing it back all this is a training done on vegetables it is a vegetable testing <laughs> vegetarian testing like how the animal testing is done on for medicines surgical surgical procedures methods how they do animal testing like that we are doing vegetable testing coconut testing is going on so maybe within next few days i'll present balasan's cracking coconuts and healing it within 7 minutes within 7 minutes they will crack and heal the cracks will disappear they will show you yesterday itself 14 balasans have cracked the coconut without even touching it not one crack multiple cracks mahagita made 14 cracks so give us few more days to come and do the demo of all the powers of sada shiva today they will do the preliminary demo moving the coconut <laughs> not one multiple many are ready for demo and then yesterday nityanand yogam participants who worked with their balasans new species can come also come and share your experience how they cracked and yesterday we were actually working on the breath today we will continue we will have to continue to work on breath because still we have not mastered breath a lot of work need to be done on the breath and manifesting the breath dimension then we will move to the depth dimension my body is in such high state of samadhi manifesting sada shivatva i'm going to spend little more time on manifesting this powers that is why i am taking little time to come on kalpatar yatra please understand if i list my priorities surely making new species manifesting powers will be the first and top most priority but surely i am going to come for kalpatar yatra also it's not that i am cancelling i am going to come kashi rameshwaram yatra will be done without any doubt so just making the next level next level initiations actually the the plans i have before shivaratri at least 100 balasans will be able to do materialization and teleportation very comfortably continuously so length breadth depth dimensions and initiations into those dimensions is happening concentrating on that more concentrating on that work in full speed come on let me invite sarva priya to come and start sharing thank you so much swami ji Actually, every day we're planning what we're going to share about the happenings here, the new species and the powers Swamiji is initiating them to manifest. And every day it seems like whatever we plan to share becomes redundant by the next session because the powers are manifesting so quickly, so rapidly, so many new 
Initiations are happening. It's hard to even keep up with that. Yesterday, what we experienced in the courtyard was something, once again, mind-blowing. And I was chatting with some of the Nityananda Yogam participants, and we all agreed that every single day when we wake up here, we expect to have our minds blown. We expect to be amazed. And it's kind of funny because usually, amazement comes spontaneously. You can only be amazed if you're not expecting something amazing to happen. I think it's only around Sadashiva in form where something amazing is the norm, it's expected. Yesterday, while sitting in the courtyard watching the new species manifest these shaktis, I couldn't help but notice Sadashiva himself in form, sitting with a beautiful murti of Nataraja behind him. And suddenly I realized how blessed we are. We take it for granted sometimes, because every day Swamiji is showering us with so many blessings. We sometimes take it a little bit too casually, what's happening here. But Nataraja, he's the form of Sadashiva, who is dancing the Tandava. Everything that exists is happening because of his dance, and here we have him in form with us, dancing that Tandava, expressing through so many bodies. I was wondering, has anything like this ever happened before? And I suddenly remembered what we've, many of us, I think, have heard. I think probably all Hindus have heard the history of the Nataraja temple in Chidambaram, where Agastya Muni actually developed, or I guess manifested the power to read the Akashic records, and then initiated some of his disciples to do the same. To this day, we have the solid proof that this historical happening happened in the form of the Nadi leaf readings. When Agastya Muni developed this capacity, when he was in Shaktinipada, or the entanglement state, to give it a cheap English translation, with Sadashiva, he was also able to raise his disciples to that same frequency so that they could also read the Akashic records. History considers this to be one of the great happenings of Sanatana Hindu Dharma, and no doubt it was. Another historical happening in that same temple in Chidambaram was that Patanjali, known by so many as the father of yoga, sat and through 1,000 heads revealed the wisdom of the cosmos to 1,000 disciples. We hear that he was sitting in a place where he was veiled because his energy was so intense, his oneness with Sadashiva was radiating at such a high frequency that if anyone even looked at him, they would be burnt. We're told that one of the disciples among those thousand became curious to see, is this really happening, or is he saying something the same to each of us? Is he saying something different? Are there really 1,000 heads expressing? So the curtain was drawn open. He had to see for himself. And 999 of those disciples who were transcribing that wisdom were burnt. The only surviving text we have from that great happening are the Patanjali Yoga Sutras. And the story has kind of a funny twist. The reason we have the Yoga Sutras is that the one disciple of Patanjali's who was transcribing this wisdom had gone for what in our Sangha we know as a one, two, three break. He had gone to relieve himself. And so he wasn't there among the others when the burning happened. What's really amazing to me is that a lot of people will think of these historical happenings that are recorded in the Puranas as mythology. The same way we consider practice to be a four-letter word here because Swamiji makes everything just manifest instantly. I also believe the word mythology should be considered like a four-letter word. Actually, myth is a four-letter word, isn't it? We know that these happenings are real because we are experiencing them every single day now. <laughs> of course, the one most amazing difference between what we're experiencing in Sadashiva's courtyard and the historical happenings in Chidambaram temple are that there in Chidambaram, through one form, through one enlightened incarnation, the Akashic reading was revealed and transmitted. 
through another incarnation. The ability to transfer the length and the breadth dimension, to just channel that knowledge through the state of Shaktinipada, or what English people would maybe roughly equate as entanglement happened. But through this form of Sadashiva, both are happening. And we know this is just the beginning. Not only are Balasants, who are now, I guess we can't even say Balasant anymore, the new species, able to just instantly know any fact, solve any mathematical equation, understand anything to do with the length dimension. They're also now very beautifully, very powerfully manifesting the Shakti to tune into any artistic creation, any creative happening that has ever taken place. And yesterday, many of us witnessed many of them just instantly start drawing a painting they've never heard of before, perfectly. Or describing the details of architecture they've never seen before, perfectly. Like walking, talking, GPS. They were able to give the exact roots, naming the streets, naming the landmarks, from one place to another place in countries they've never personally visited or even studied. What's happening is so far beyond the realm of anything we would have imagined before. I really can't imagine what's going to happen next. But even more amazingly, as we were witnessing this beautiful happening of the Balasans manifesting this Shakti, Swamiji gave them yet another initiation. As Swamiji described so beautifully, when they're in such a high state of oneness, we're able to make anything move, even the world itself. And this is already starting. It's not just that they've been initiated and eventually they're going to be able to make coconuts move. They are already doing it. And yesterday, we witnessed so many members of the new species just making the coconut lift off people's hands, roll from side to side, even crack that we can't have a proper sharing today on stage unless we show this happening. So before I invite the participants of Nityananda Yogam to share their experiences, I would like to invite some of the Balasants, some of the members of the new species, to come to the stage with your coconuts. And as the sharings are going on, you can actually see them sitting in a state of Shaktinipada, connected with Sadashiva himself just through their will, just through their extreme feeling of oneness with all, they'll make these coconuts move. So, Balasant, if you can please come to the stage and have your coconuts with you. I think it's so new and so exciting that even now, just to stand on the stage, they're being filled with so much overwhelming excitement and enthusiasm. So you can see that they're each holding a coconut, and I can attest to the fact that these are all intact and whole. I was looking at them, feeling them backstage. There's nothing unusual about these coconuts. It's not like we, we've done anything to them. But you'll see just through the power of their deep connection with Swamiji, they will be making these coconuts move. So the first participant from the Nityananda Yogam program to share his experiences today is Hohepa and the Balasant he'll be with is Sri Nitya Nyanamaya Maharaj. Nityananda Swamiji. Nityananda everyone. Um, my name is Hohepa. I'm a business owner in um, Australia, and this is Sri Nitya Nyanamayananda. So yesterday we were in the courtyard, and Swamiji initiated us really early in the morning um, into this new, the new power of um, breath. And during the day we were just all sitting around in the courtyard for the new species, the Balasins, all of us, and just playing with this this new power, asking them whatever, whatever question we wanted to. And, you know, one by one, people started standing up. And 
people were clapping and cheering and then I stood up and had I had a look and I was like, what is everyone looking at? And then over in the corner there was a couple of Balasons and they were uh, holding coconuts in their hands. I was like, okay, what are they doing? And then just watching them, I could see they were moving, the, they were playing with the coconut. <laughs> As you can see, that's exactly what we were seeing. So, you know, we were all excited. We were like, my God, what's happening? This is like a huge breakthrough, you know? And um, so Swamiji goes, okay, now all the balasins, you can all start manifesting power. Oh my God, they all started cheering. And, you know, in the next couple of minutes, half an hour, it was just like so casual. So casually, everyone was just playing with this new power. You know, where in the world can you go where... You're manifesting these powers and, you know, it's just like, okay, another power is coming up. Okay, that's, that's fine. You know, only in Swamiji's house can you be expressing so much powers and be so casual about it. You know, nowhere, nowhere can you do that. Nowhere on earth can you experience such a place like this place. see they are not doing anything. You can see very clearly they are not doing anything and <clears throat> I'll also bring them and do the demo by tomorrow day after tomorrow they will keep it on the ground and move. See one is holding another one is moving. When you do the demo you have to be very clear people are skeptics not spectators spectators. They are not spectators, they are spectators. So you should be always fulfilling their anyakara. Mm. So this is like an initial play, initial play of the power of that oneness. I should say that cracking and healing, that will be the real demo. I am bringing them for that, maybe by tomorrow. Yesterday itself they have done it. I am just helping them to manifest more strongly. So they will be demo ready within seven minutes, they will be able to do it. So um, Nyanamaya is just like all these balasins you see in front of you. He's, he's able to move it up and down, off to the side, and even he cracked it in my hand. And I, I saw the, all this and it was amazing. And so later on in the night, while um, all the balasins had gone off to dinner, Swamiji had went off to do whatever he was doing, and um, all the Nityananda Yoga participants were just in the courtyard, you know, we were either having food or talking, and then I just go down and I sit with somebody, and then we're just like, okay, now let's have a try. Okay, so I tried it, and, you know, I was so surprised. I just easily moved the coconut, just like how these kids are doing it. Oh, me, I was so surprised. You know, with me manifesting powers, it's like such a, such a thing. I'm like a coconut. I need to be cracked. And so <laughs> I could make it go up and down, off, everything. And then I even tried. I tried to do it without even touch, without even moving my hands. And I was so surprised. I could do it. I just went straight up, straight down and off. Yeah, and yeah, that was amazing. So thanks for the <laughs> So I just want to mention, while we're watching these demonstrations, if you've ever held a coconut, it's not very stable. It's not like you can easily balance it so that it's sitting 
uh, without rolling around. Even if you try to put a coconut on a solid surface, it's going to roll a little bit. And I noticed that when the camera was zoomed in, it was showing my yoga mata holding the coconut from Anandita. I want to say what I was observing was that Manandita was moving it so intensely and so rapidly that if you saw my yoga mata's hand moving a little bit, she was restabilizing it so that it wouldn't fall. It's not like she was making it fall. So as someone who personally experienced this yesterday, holding one of the coconuts while the balasants were moving them, it's so natural. We have this instinct not to drop something. We'll be grabbing it. So despite the fact that a lot of us were trying to hold the coconut, they were even still knocking the coconuts out of our hands. And it didn't feel like just random movement. At one point, instead of moving the coconut upward, the balasant was hitting down on it energetically. His hand was about one foot away. But as he was going like this, it literally felt like there was a hammer hitting the coconut in the hand. So naturally, the hand was going up and down. Whatever Swamiji has initiated them into, it's just so huge that I really feel like if you're not here, you're missing out on something really, really monumental. It might be something just the first stage. Swamiji was telling us this is just the first level of this manifestation. But there's nobody else on planet Earth right now who can even come close to touching the first level of this initiation. So if you're feeling like you wish you were here, you were also a part of this, again and again, I have to say, don't miss the next inner awakening because we don't know which more powers are going to manifest between now and then. It's something you definitely want to be a part of. So next, I'd like to invite Sri Nitya Dritananda with a balasant, Sri Nitya Priyananda. <laughs> Nityanandam, my name is, uh, as Swarupa Priyananda said, Sri Nitya Dridananda, and this is Sri Nitya Priyananda. And uh, in my past life, my name was Jordan Kremer, and I was a professional ice hockey player. And so uh, naturally, when uh, we started playing around yesterday, uh, before the coconuts came out, uh, Priyananda and I were sitting there working on some uh, uh, visualization uh, uh, abilities. and. And I asked him to draw an ice hockey rink. And being from India, he has no clue what <laughs> the sport ice hockey is. And uh, I was a little disappointed at that at first. But uh, once he started to uh, awaken or, or start utilizing the third eye and, and uh, looking into this, uh, the granite slab, uh, he started to draw this image that started to look exactly like an ice hockey rink. And uh, you can see that on the screen there. And Eventually, he started with a sketch, and then he, I asked him to start uh, using some colors because we had some paints out, and, and I said, okay, so what are the colors out there? What, what do you see? And, and, he, and he, he drew this one line that, across the middle, and he's like, it's, it's red, right? And I'm like, it's, absolutely, it's red. And then he said, I said, so what's the color in, of the circle in the middle? And he goes, it's, it's red. And, uh, and then he even started to draw this. If you look at the screen there on the bottom right, there's this little black disc, and he's like, uh, he started to draw the ice hockey puck, and I'm like, yes, that's the, that's the ice hockey puck. And, uh, unfortunately, the, it's uh, a victim of some scribbles there, but uh, what had happened actually was after we, we started to do the painting, we took a break, and uh, I went back to the room, and I came back, and, and I came into the courtyard, and all of a sudden, just as I arrived, uh, there was this big gathering that started to uh, develop in, in, the, in the far corner. And uh, what happened was there's a few of the balasans sitting there and all of a sudden I see that they have coconuts in their hand and, and all of a sudden these coconuts just start rising and rising and rising and they're playing with it. And I'm like, with everybody else, it just went deftly like silent and we were just staring in awe and we're like, like everybody's looking at Swamiji and looking there and Swamiji's just sitting there giggling and laughing and, and so we're all just it was a completely incredible experience to be a part of and then sure enough a few seconds later Swamiji's okay the, like the rest of you you can go manifest and uh, so me and Priya started playing around again and uh, at first he did not get it right away but after a few minutes he started to get the hang of it I guess and what happens is like you feel this energy like this movement it's almost like a, a like a, a wave in the ocean at first and uh, that I mean, I know it might look like your hands moving up and down, but it's like if you have weights on your shoulder and then you drop it, like you adjust for it in a second, and all of a sudden he's 
after a few minutes, not even using his hands, and he's just like using his eyes and, the, and, and rolling it over. And, and even just before coming on stage, we have a coconut back there, and he's just kind of playing around with it and practicing. And uh, it's completely incredible, to say the least. And so uh, to be a part of this experience and to see this in action, and, and I mean, uh, I was for sure one of those skeptics, like uh, Swamiji said, and uh, to, to experience it and to see it firsthand, I mean, uh, that, that's completely dropped. And like Swoopa Priyananda said, if you have uh, any desire to come to Inner Awakening or you don't have a desire, you need to come because Swami Jesus gave this power. We woke up and we were doing yoga at 5 a.m. and all of a sudden it's like, no, come to the courtyard. I'm actually going to give you guys a new power and you're going to be able to manifest it and demo it in one day. So like that's one day. I can only imagine what happens between now and the next IA. So definitely uh, book your ticket and get, get, uh, get on board and come to IA and who knows how many powers we're going to have until then. So thank you very much. Okay, uh, Ma Balananda has something to share that she experienced with Ma Deepa. And Deepa is actually one of the Bala sons now sitting on the stage doing a coconut demo. Okay, so this has been a wild ride for me because the, the types of things that we're seeing here is like a magical mystery school. And, you know, I feel like I'm in a mystical dream to see these superpowers emerging from the students in the, the Nityananda Gurukul. And as a school principal, I really see the potential for the expression of these powers in children who are all gifted and talented. So imagine your child who maybe has been given an IQ test or has been through the rigors of being tortured by the academia of the Western world and imagine that child who's insecure and lacks confidence and maybe has been kicked out of school or hasn't made the right grade, being in a totally new paradigm where they're expressing superpowers and they have the confidence of a master. So this is Deepa. She's my favorite Gurukul student. And the reason why she's my favorite is because she has length, breadth, and depth. She has the deepest caring for other people. She's always facilitating, helping people get food, taking charge, being a leader. And she's also very artistic and expresses herself and her individuality. And of course, she's a mathematical genius. So she has everything going for her. <laughs> so yesterday, I asked her to draw a picture of a centaur. And she says, what is a centaur? And I said, it's a mythological creature. And she said, what is that? And I said, oh, I can't give any more clues. <laughs> so she started to draw. And hopefully, we, we can match this to something. But if you can. Of course, a centaur is a half man, half horse. So you can see, there it is, the half man, half horse. Now, just keep the camera on the page because the second thing she was asked to draw was a Picasso picture. So, in this Picasso picture, it's called Dr. Odd. And she immediately drew a grid with four different pictures in it. And I'm like, why did she draw a grid with four different pictures? And in fact, uh, of course, you see displayed on the screen, the eyes are not uh, on level with the Picasso, actual Picasso drawing. But on the internet, uh, we took a picture of this, there was a grid with many faces, different faces in it, and they all looked exactly like her picture. So you can see on the book, you can see that there are many faces and their eyes are not on level. They're uh, on the side of the face, and they're uh, large heads. And there was uh, actually this one you see, she's wearing a headband. And the first picture has got the headband with the hair and the eye kind of off center. So she drew this. Now, the third thing that she did, uh, we asked her, and I'm going to put this book down, to describe the Darber Hall. Is that Am I pronouncing that? Darber Hall in Mysore Palace. And she said, oh, I don't think I can draw all of this, but I can describe it, so you have to hear this. The floor, uh, the floor is a smooth marble 
flooring. One part of it is covered with red carpet. The hall is huge. On the top, the ceiling has a deep cut with different designs. And she says the ceiling is white. So you can see up at the top where it's shining white. It has giant chandeliers. So you can see the giant chandeliers in the ceiling. And they're circular shaped, as you can see. White ceiling, also the wall is a beige color. There are pillars, uh, pillar-like carvings along the wall. And you can see the pillars all along, up and down the hallway. And she drew a picture of the pillar. I'm gonna try to do this again. <laughs> there is a pillar down at the bottom. Point, can you point to it? Yeah, right there. So the pillar is exactly the same pillar that is in the uh, Mysore Palace. And she says not only the height, but also the length is huge. So you see the depth of this palace. There's a stage-like structure in the front of the hall. So if you go all the way to the very end of the hall in the Mysore Palace, in fact, there is a, a stage-like structure, and that's evidently where the, the king of the palace would give his speeches. So I don't know if you can zoom in on that, but there's the stage at the very end of the hallway. So she says, and every few feet there are vases, there are plants that are in vases. Now we didn't see that, but what we're wondering is if we went to Mysore Palace today and we were to look behind those pillars, would we see vases with flowers? And we probably would. There's a plant behind those pillars. So Deepa, tell me a little bit, talk to the audience and tell me a little bit about what does it feel like to manifest these powers? See, usually all of us will be like, we have to study and all those, like doing whatever the teacher says and all that. But the life which we are living here is completely different. It's like we are the teachers and we do everything which we have to do, do in the whole world. Like the whole life itself is like a whole lot of things which we can do. Nobody even knew that other than like seeing in the movie like Harry Potter waving the wands and they do something. But here without any wands, just one initiation. Being in the space of Swamiji, everything happens. You can download maths, download chemistry, download physics. You just don't need to mug up anything. You just need to sit for the exam and that's it. You get all the answers correct. So that's how our life is here. Like, and who, which kid will not ask for this life? Like all of us are enjoying our life. And not only that, being in Swamiji's space, it's what more to ask for than to be in his space. So everyone who has a child or is a child inside and would like to grow up and manifest the grown-up superpowers of the new species, come to Inner Awakening. Thank you. I just want to quickly mention, I didn't tell anybody to say come to Inner Awakening. I get accused too often that I have some agenda to try to make everybody come. It's just when you've seen the best that existence has to offer, you naturally want to share that with everyone. And it's really making me thrilled to see how we all have that same cognition, that same understanding. Uh, so next I'd like to invite Chico to share. And the balasant with whom Chico was blessed to work yesterday is Ma Yoga Mata. Nityananda, I want to share my experience from yesterday because uh, I was sitting on the male section and I was doing my practice with the, with the guys. And then one of a sudden I just turned around and then I was, let's say, facing the female section and she was there. And Maybe it's a very s nice thing to say, like it's now a year ago that I was once uh, watching YouTube to my favorite music, it's a Mexican singer. And then one of a sudden I saw this little pop up and that was this video about this girl with the superpowers. So I think, okay, push on it, pushed on it and she came and I think, oh man, wow, this is really something. <laughs> so it was very, she was very, she was actually my first connection to Samiji, of course, Samiji <laughs> sent her. 
but she was um, so for me it's like a year ago that I entered this this community so it was a very special yeah it's a special year of course so many things happened anyway then I saw to her and I think okay I'm just gonna turn around and I'm gonna go quickly towards her instead of the male section and then I ask her the question, could you maybe see the, a very famous church in Paris? It's the Notre Dame. And she says, okay, okay. And she starred and this and this and I think, oh yes, this is true and this is true and this is true. Everything was right. But in the middle of the church, she made two towers. I don't know if the picture actually is available. But anyway, in the middle, she signed a very high peak. And I said, no, 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 that's not there, that's not there. And there's water along it. No, 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 that's also not there, I thought. And I visit that church a lot of times. I thought I was the, a professional. Anyway, then we kept going. And then I was on Google, and I turned around. And then I saw that at the west side of the church, there was the sand. There was the water. And I think, oh, man. I said, yes, 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 you did it right. And the peak, which she saw actually in the middle, when you go behind the church, there is this high peak. But you cannot see it from the front. And then I was really like, there's... The magic is there, of course. So I think, wow, you did it right, right, right. Hmm? Ah, yes. And then one of a sudden I say, like, do you see something in the center of the church? There is a very special symbol, very famous. And she said in the beginning, yes, yes, yes. And there's a circle. And she start making that circle. And it is a very famous uh, window there with all these, um, what is the name again? I forgot the name in English. This, I don't know, but all the colors in it. Stained glass, yes, that's the thing. And she draw it, and she start with a very little figure, and she start making more and more and more, and then she had the whole window, and she placed it in the middle. And I thought it was the flower of life. I'm not 100% sure about it, but it looked like this shape of this um, structure. So I think, wow, that's nice. And of course, what everybody says already, at night time we did all these things with the coconuts. I had them in my hand, I felt like it was a magnet. And I realized the first time in my life that I thought, I'm really, it's not a movie, of course, but it's like you are in, a, in an environment and you think like, we don't know what's happening after maybe 20 years. Then this is all by huge history and people were writing about it, making movies about it, and we are part of it. And that's what I realized. So I said also to her yesterday, do you know that I'm kind of fan of you and that I really admire you to bring with you? And she's just said very simple, oh yes, yes, that's okay, it's okay. <laughs> so very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you, Samiji, and thank everybody to make this happen. So, Nithya Nandam. And next, I'd like to introduce Jean, who was manifesting these Shaktis or enjoying the manifestation of these Shaktis through Sri Nitya Sundareshwar Ananda Maharaj. I'm Jean Marc. I'm coming from Switzerland. I got to know Swamiji. Uh, very sh in a very short time, since uh, last September. And since that time, I'm having am an amazing time. Yesterday, I've been uh, the pleasure, and I was blessed to work with uh, my friend Sudareshwara for Manifesting Powers. So together, we make a trip back to Switzerland. So the first question I, have been, I was asking him is where I live, it's a little town, very pretty town, and it's dominated by two hills, and it's very uh, special place. So I've been asking if he was able to see what was on the on these two uh, special hills in the middle of my of my valley. So Sundareshwara was able to see two buildings, and I have I asked him what kind of building. One was a castle, an old castle which actually is in runes. So he was able to draw the runes and the different uh, walls of this old castle. On the other hill, he was able to see a church. So it was really uh, very interesting information, precise information. So we started to visit the church together. And I asked him, uh, if he was able to see inside this church, there is a special piece which is the oldest one in Europe, which is supposed to be the oldest one in Europe. So he was saying different things in the church, and he found this piece, he recognized a very old organ, 
which was inside. And this is still possible to play with this organ, and it's a very old one. He was able to draw it very precisely. On the top of that, he was able to give the details because as it is an old one, it, is, it was still made of wood, a wooden piece, and with some strings. Then, after this visit of the church, I was feeling homesick, so I asked him to drive me home. So, we started the trip at the end of the highway, and he was able to show me the way to my home, which is about three or four kilometers. And each time there was a change of direction, he was able to mention the change of the direction and the right direction. <laughs> then I was amazed because when I reached my, I reached my home, in fact, I have to go left, and this is my place, but it, it took the right direction, and that was the direction when I park, where I park my car. <laughs> then there is a particularity in Switzerland, we are speaking three main national languages, so I draw the map of Switzerland, and it was able to passion to to describe the border between the different uh, languages, uh, space languages in Switzerland. But what was amazing is he told me that there was a part in Switzerland where they don't speak German or French or Italian, but they speak a mixture of German and Italian. And this is the fourth languages of national languages of Switzerland. I didn't ask the question, but he was able to mention that. I don't know if you want to add something, but this is from my side what I wanted to share with you, thanking Swamiji for everything. Thank you. So next I'd like to invite Suniva and Mijin with the Balasant Sri Nitya Nyana Prakashananda. Nithyanandam, everyone. Uh, so the day before yesterday, uh, I was also with Yana Prakasha, and I asked the question about what's the temperature on Mars? Hmm. And he said immediately, he said 20 degrees. And I was thinking, I don't think it's 20 degrees on Mars, but let me Google it. So I Google it, and it said like temperatures uh, almost to uh, negative 200 degrees came up, but then I read further, and it said in the summer, near equator, it could be 20 degrees. So, <laughs> I was amazed. And um, yesterday when we started to play with the depth dimension, we asked, I asked a question um, about if we could draw a famous painting called Scream from a Norwegian um, artist, famous artist called Edward Munch. Uh, and he started to draw a lady uh, with a table. So he described, he saw a lady with long hair with, beside a table. Uh, I don't know if I should uh, show the picture. And maybe you can project if you have the picture. Oh yeah. So I was thinking, that's not the photo I was thinking about. But we Googled it and we found <laughs> that he actually had painted a painting with a lady by a table. <laughs> And then uh, we asked the question, like, uh, can you draw the map from Chicago to Grand Rapids, Michigan? Um, and he drew the map and he got the road signs colors correct. It's blue and red. And the shape is also like the same shape. <laughs> And then um, we decided maybe we want to um, maybe we want to ask him like famous monuments or famous landmarks. And so we asked him, okay, there's a city called San Francisco. 
in California, in, in America, and there's a famous bridge. And naturally we thought, okay, he's gonna draw the Golden Gate Bridge. But then he drew um, a black bridge with um, ropes. And he said there's inter, like uh, v, v shapes on the towers. And then we thought, okay, like, okay, next question. He didn't get this right. But then I looked on my Google images <laughs> and there's a bridge called Oakland Bay Bridge in San Francisco that he drew exactly like this. And it looks exactly the same with the V on the towers and it's black with the ropes. Yeah, and, and then we moved on to the Sydney Opera House. We said, okay, there's a country called Australia and then there's a place called an opera, uh, opera house in Sydney where they play music. And um, how does it look like? And he drew a dome. He, he drew a dome, which is um, for the sails. Yes, for the sails. And, um, and then he grabbed a purple crayon and he started coloring the inside of it. And then I thought, okay, well, that's weird. Um, but then, so we were trying to move on to the next question, but then I was like, no, I remember the Oakland Bridge, so let me Google it. And I Googled interior of Sydney Opera House. And in the northern foyer in the Sydney Opera House, they have a carpet that's bright purple, exact same color, at least all the way up to the stairs as well. So <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Swamiji, for giving us this opportunity to experience this amazing experience. Yes. Actually, I should tell you this. It's a lot of research, a lot of development, a lot of breakthrough. Just like how I made the third eye reading, body scanning, all that as an established science now. Very soon, in next few days, I'll establish this length and breadth as an established science without any doubts. Now, what you are having is a preliminary first initial expressions of these great demonstrators. Or I should say, who is going to be now the great demonstrators. So with this, it is time. I wanted to go and start the work. So I am back to you guys tomorrow with some more. So with this, I bless you all. Let you all radiate with integrity, authenticity, responsibility, enriching, causing, living Shuddhadvaita Saivam Sadashivoham. The eternal bliss, Nityananda. Thank you. Be blissful.